YouTubers, I'm back. Yeah. My new spotlight. Oh, that's bright. If I look at it, I get blind by it. I see all kinds of spots now. Ooh. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. The world as it appears to us now is, as I said, largely a reflection of the egoic mind, fear being an un unavoidable consequence of egoic delusion. It is a world dominated by fear, just as the image, images in a dream are symbols of inner states and feelings. So our collective reality is largely a symbolic expression of fear and of the heavy layers of negativity that have accumulated in the collective human psyche. We are not separate from our world. So when the majority of humans become free of egoic delusion, this inner change will affect all of creation. You will literally inhabit a new world. It is a shift in planetary consciousness. The strange Buddhist saying that every tree and every blade of grass will eventually become enlightenment points to the same truth. According to St. Paul, the whole of creation is waiting for humans to become enlightened. This is how I interpret is saying that the created universe is waiting with eager expectation for God's sons to be revealed. Yeah. Saint Paul goes on to say that all of creation will become redeemed through this. Up to the present, the whole created universe in all its part groans as if in the pangs of childbirth. Pangs of childbirth. What is being born is a new consciousness and as its inevitable reflection, a new world. This is also foretold in the New Testament book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. But don't confuse cause and effect. Your pri primary task is not to seek salvation through creating a better world, but to awaken out of ident identification with form. You are then no longer bound to this world, this level of reality. You can feel your roots in the unmanifested and so are free of attachment to the manifested world. You can still enjoy the passing pleasures of this world, but there is no fear of loss anymore, so you don't need to cling to them. Although you can enjoy sensory, sens sensory pleasures, the craving of sensory, sensory experience is gone, as is the constant search for fulfillment through psychological gratification, through feeding the ego. You are in touch with something infinitely greater than any pleasure, greater than any manifested thing. Yeah, greater than your circumstances. In a way, you then don't need the world anymore. You don't even need it to be different from the way it is. It is only at this point that you begin to make a real contribution toward bringing about a better world, toward creating a different order of reality. It is only at this point that you are able to feel true compassion and to help others at the level of cause. Only those who have transcended the world can bring about a better world. You may remember that we talked about the dual nature of true compassion, which is awareness of a common bound of shared mortality and immortality. In this deep level, compassion becomes healing in the widest, widest sense. In that state, your healing influence is primarily based not on doing but on being. 
everybody you come in contact with will be touched by your presence and affected by the by the peace that you emanate, whether they are conscious of it or not. When you are fully present and people around you manifest unconscious behavior, you won't feel the need to react to it, so you don't give it you don't give it any reality. Your peace is so vast and deep that anything that is not peace disappears into it as if it had never existed. This breaks the karmic cycle of action and reaction. Animals, trees, flowers will feel your peace and respond to it. You, you teach through being, through demonstrating the peace of God. You become the light of the world, an emanation of pure consciousness. And so you eliminate suffering on the level of cause. You eliminate unconsciousness from the world. Unconsciousness from the world. This doesn't mean that you may not also teach through doing, for example, by pointing out how to disidentify from the mind, recognize unconscious patterns with oneself, and so on. But you are, but who you are is always a more vital teaching and a more powerful transformer of the world than what you say, and more essential even than what you do. Yeah. Furthermore, to recognize the primary prim, primacy of being and thus work on the level of cause does not include the possibility that your compassion may simultaneously manifest on the level of doing and on effect by alleviating, alleviating suffering whenever you come across it. When a hungry person asks you for bread and you have some, you will give it. But as you give the bread, even though your interaction may only be very brief, what really matters in this moment of shared being, of which the bread is only a symbol, that's it, a deep healing takes place within it. In that moment, there is no giver, no receiver. But there shouldn't be any hunger and starvation in the first place. How can we create a better world without tackling evils such as hunger and violence first? All evils are the effect of unconsciousness. You can alleviate the effect of unconsciousness. But you cannot eliminate them unless you eliminate their cause. True change happens within, not without. If you feel called upon to alleviate suffering in the well, that is a very noble thing to do. But remember not to focus exclusively on the outer, otherwise you will encounter frustration and despair. Without a profound change in human consci consciousness, the world's suffering is a bottomless pit. So don't let your compassion become one-sided. Empathy with someone else's pain or lack and a desire to help need to be balanced with a deeper realization of the eternal nature of all life and the ultimate illusion of all pain. Then let your peace flow into whatever you do and you will be working on the levels of effect and cause simultaneously. This also applies if you are supporting a movement designed to stop deeply unconscious humans from destroying themselves, each other, and the planet, or from continuing to inflict dreadful suffering on other sentient beings. Rem remember, just as you cannot fight the darkness, so you cannot fight unconsciousness. If you try to do so, the polar opposites will become strengthened and more deeply entrenched. You will become identified with one of the polarities. You will create an enemy and so be drawn into unconsciousness yourself. Raise awareness by disseminating information. 
or at the most practice passive resistance but make sure that you carry no resistance within no hatred no negativity love your enemies said jesus which of course means have no enemies once you get involved in working on the level of effect it is all too easy to love yourself in it stay alert and very very present the causal levels The causal level needs to remain your primary focus, the teaching of enlightenment, your main purpose, and peace, your most, your most precious gift to the world. We're almost done with the book. I'm out. I'll be back.